Good evening, Stats fans. You know it when you see it, and you see it when you know it. It is Stat Center, presented by the Michelson 20MM Foundation. I'm Robert Adut of yaymath.org. Tonight, we're hitting up concepts of independent and mutually exclusive events. And who better to chart a course for us than future MLB Hall of Famer, Derek Jeter. Stay tuned. It's an episode you don't want to miss. In baseball, it's critical to get hits with runners in scoring position. Popping a single with a runner on third is better than a single with no runners on base because the runner on third is, well, in scoring position. And a player who hits better with runners in scoring position is theoretically more valuable to the team because that player helps bring in more runs. But how do we know if a player is in fact a better hitter with runners in scoring position? Statistics, of course. Joining us now is Mr. RBI Ribby himself, former New York Yankee shortstop, Captain Clutch, Mr. November, El Capitan, Derek Jeter. Derek, what an honor. You can call me Derek if you like, Robert, but I ain't putting on no pinstripe uniform. I see. Thank you. Okay, uh, due to a scheduling conflict, Mr. Jeter has been unavoidably detained. Filling in in his place is former heavyweight boxing champion, Iron Mike Tyson. Mike, always a pleasure. Let's cut to the chase, Robert. Real Housewives on in 10. Ah, uh, yes, and I wouldn't want you to miss that, sir. So, Mike, how do we know if a player is in fact a better hitter with runners in scoring position? It's fairly intuitive, Robert. We can make this determination by looking at a player's batting average and comparing it to their batting average with runners in scoring position. If the batting average with runners in scoring position is higher, you would conclude that the player is indeed better in those situations. Maybe his focus is higher or his process improves with added pressure. Applying the concept of conditional probability, we can calculate the probability of a hit given runners in scoring position and compare it to the probability of a hit without runners in scoring position. When we make this type of comparison, we are venturing into a critical component of probability, determining independence. Events are independent if the probability of one of them occurring is independent of or unaffected by the occurrence of the other event. Such unexpected and surprisingly thorough insight. In our example, we were trying to see if the probability of a hit is affected by the event of having runners in scoring position. So using probability notation, we'd say two events are independent if the following are true. The probability of A given B equals the probability of A and the probability of B given A equals the probability of B and the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. But you only need to check one of these to prove independence. So choose whichever is the most straightforward to you. What probability of A given B equals probability of A basically means is that the probability of event A happening is just that, regardless of whether event B occurred or not. To check whether the events are independent, we could look at the probability of a hit given runners in scoring position to see if it equals the probability of a hit in general. Okay, so if those two probabilities are equal, then the events are independent of each other, meaning having a runner in scoring position has no effect on the probability of a batter getting a hit? No, who's the champ, Robert? Pop! So with only five minutes left until Real Housewives, talk to us about the difference between independent and mutually exclusive events. Two minutes, Robert. I need to microwave my popcorn. Uh, of course. Mutually exclusive means it's impossible for two events to happen simultaneously. If a player shoots two free throws, for instance, the events making both free throws and missing both free throws are mutually exclusive because they can't both happen at once. We express this in probability notation by stating, 
if events A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A and B equals zero. Housewife time. Peace out, Robert. Thank you, champ, for joining us on such short notice. To keep these two concepts separate, remember that mutually exclusive means two events that can never happen together, like Mike Tyson appearing on my show and watching Real Housewives at the same time. Impossible. Independence means that one event happening does not affect the probability of the other occurring. Like Mike Tyson appearing on tonight's show, will have no effect on Derek Jeter's willingness to be on a future episode, please, I hope. Until next time, this is Robert Adut, a.k.a. Soda Papinski. Star, star. Um. Oh.